Well, he is risen. He is he risen. risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Our text for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, the resurrection of Jesus. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took their spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you? While he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and all the others who, uh, with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of our Lord. Well, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll just keep saying it. All right, we can just do that for the whole sermon. Right, he is risen. He defeated death. Death could not hold him. Jesus has risen. And it's, it's amazing. Right? It's, it's amazing and it's unbelievable. Literally, it was unbelievable. And if you listen to the story that we just read, to the account of Jesus' resurrection, right, the women, they, they went to the tomb. But they didn't go to the tomb because they were checking to make sure Jesus had risen. They brought with them the spices to embalm the body. Right? They were expecting a dead Jesus because people just don't rise from the dead. That's unbelievable. But they found it, right? They found the empty tomb. And these angels, they, they come before them and they say, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is risen. Right? And he reminds them, do you remember? Because Jesus had told them many times what would happen. And finally they hear it. Oh, the Christ. He said that he would rise. So they run back and they tell the, the eleven, they tell the apostles and the others that were with them, guys, you're not going to believe it. We went to the tomb and he's risen. It was empty. The angel told us he was risen. And what did the eleven do? They didn't believe. Right? It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. They said that it, it sounded to them like utter nonsense. Right? Because people just don't rise from the dead. But then there was Peter. Right? Peter's never one to just sit back and just accept things. So he runs down there. He gets to the tomb. He sees the tomb is empty. But even then, what does it say? It says he wondered about these things. Hmm. I wonder what's happening here. Still not totally convinced. Right? Then we have, about a week later, they're all in this upper room. And Jesus appears to them. He's suddenly in the room with them, or at least all but one of them, right? And they see him and they, wow, he's really alive, he's really alive, and they're amazed. Except that one guy who wasn't there, Thomas. Right? Thomas just doesn't happen to be in the room at the time, and so then the disciples, they go to Thomas and they say, Thomas, guess what? We've seen Jesus, he's alive, right? That the tomb has been empty. The women came back and said that he's alive. They say, now we've seen him. And Thomas, I don't believe it. Not until I see his hands and his feet. It was unbelievable, right? People just don't rise from the dead. And they continue, this continues to be an issue in, even in the early church, and it continues to be an issue today, where we deny the resurrection of Jesus. Because it doesn't make sense. It's unbelievable. Right? People just don't rise from the dead. It, it doesn't make any sense. But we shouldn't be surprised that people have trouble with this. In 1 Corinthians 
chapter 1, verses 21 to 25, it says this. For since the wisdom of God, or for since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For the Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. It is unbelievable. And we will never, by our own wisdom, by the world's wisdom, will we, ne we will never come to the point where we say, yes, well, obviously, Jesus rose from the dead. Because the world can't see it, and we don't get there by our own reasoning. Rather, God draws us to us, or to him, as we proclaim that word, that he is risen, right? That Jesus died, he took our sins upon himself, he paid the price, and then he rose from the dead. And the Holy Spirit works in us with those words to create faith that we might believe. Because we would never get there on our own. Jesus has defeated death. He won. He has overcome death. And we have this hope of this new life that is to come, that we will also be raised with him. But right now we live in, in a now but not yet reality. Right? It, it, it's true now, Jesus has conquered death, he has overcome the grave, and yet it is not yet fully fulfilled, fully completed. For that we wait for Christ's return, when those who are in him will rise and be with him for all time. But for now we live in the not yet. Right? We're, we're still surrounded by suffering and death. I was at a funeral this week. Um, one of the members of the family of Christ by the name of uh, Nick Nicklin uh, had passed. And funerals are interesting things, aren't they? Because in a funeral, we are faced with death. Right? We come face to face with it. We can't deny it. It's right there. But as Christians, as those who know Christ, who know the resurrection, we look at that and we say, yes. But that's not the last word. That is not the end for Nick. Nick will be raised again, just as Christ was raised again, just as we all will be raised to be with him. That is the hope that we have. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in our epistle reading that we read, it said that Christ was the first fruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him and then the end will come, but there's an order to this. Christ has risen, and we will rise when he returns. And that is the hope that we have. That's why we don't mourn as those who have no hope, because we know the one who has overcome death. We know the one who has defeated death. In the resurrection, we see that Christ has paid the, the penalty for our sins. We see that his sacrifice was accepted. My God, we see that resurrection is real, that there really is life after death. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, once again, it says, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in turn, each in turn. He has defeated death. He has been risen. But if that isn't true, if, all, if that isn't, didn't actually happen, we're most to be paid. Because none of this is real. Right? If Christ didn't rise from the dead, then we're still in our sins. Then we're still under the law. We've got to earn our way with God. I don't know about you, but I'm not doing so hot with that. Right? I sin. We all sin. 
If this isn't true, then we can take the Bible and just throw it out because the Bible over and over and over proclaims the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It stakes everything on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is our hope. But he was raised. He was indeed raised. As witness after witness proclaimed, both the disciples, the women, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, at one point over 500 people that Christ appeared in front of, he was raised. And most importantly, the word of God attests to the resurrection of Jesus. He was risen and through faith you will be too. Your sins are forgiven through Christ in his resurrection. So our hope is not in just in what to come, but it also is now, right? It is now, but not yet. The not yet is the resurrection that we look to, but even now, Christ makes us alive in him. For we were once dead in our sins, in our trespasses, and Christ has raised us to life in him. He has given us a new identity. He has made us a new creation. And that gives us new purpose. It gives us new hope. It gives us a new way to be towards each other and towards others. And we're going to be exploring some of those things in the weeks to come as we look at our identity in Christ over the next few weeks. But today, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Because in his rising is our hope, is our faith. So he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.